the Okay, got it. That was so tough to actually figure out where that lies in the measure. It's actually on the end of the one. So for those of you who do not know, that was the great and mighty Sheree Reed, one of my biggest all-time favorite bass players, one of my biggest influences at that. He's playing a gospel song by the great Walter Hawkins. When the battle is over, you want to check that song out. One of the most funkiest gospel songs you will ever hear. So he's playing this, covering this tune, and he plays this lick in this line. I'm like, what the, what? It's gospel. Let's, let's keep it clean. What the heck was that? So we're going to be breaking down that lick that he just played right now. Okay, so house rules. Let's get this out the way. I'm Derek Bennett from Bass Nation Academy, an online bass education school where you probably should be if you're not right now. If you're new to this channel, subscribe to the channel. Go check out the Bass Nation online. Uh, the link is going to be in the description. I'll put all that information there. Check out past lessons. Good stuff. I don't want to spend too much time talking about that. Check it out for yourself. Anyway, let's get right into it. So let's break this down really quick. When I listened to this lick, I slowed it down and I'm like, that sounds familiar. We've actually done an exercise very similar to this. Very, very, very similar exercise to this lick that he played. So what he did, first and foremost, it starts on the end of one on that first measure. So right there. Okay, so we're gonna start on that D flat. He's utilizing the D flat major scale and playing it in a variation that sounds like an exercise, but when sped up like that, it just sounds like a ridiculous lick. And he's genius for this. Just It came out of nowhere to me. I wasn't expecting it. And that's one of the best ways to, to kind of, you know, spark somebody's interest or spark, spark the listener's interest and just play something that really wasn't expected, but this has that much flavor to it. Uh, and he's great for that. He plays uh, just very, very unique. The bass lines and riffs that he comes up with is just the placement of it as well is just as important as what it is. But let's get to it. D flat major scale. So we're doing one, three, six, five, four. Right, and then walking back down, three, two. Now, that's the actual pattern of every single note that we're gonna be playing. So I'll show you. One, three, six, walk it down. Five, four, three, two. Now we're doing that same pattern. Three, six, if we were to think about it that way, but we're actually doing two, four, seven. Okay, so second note of the major scale, fourth note of the major scale, and then seventh note of the major scale. Okay, so now walk it down. All the way down to the third note. So that same exact pattern that one, three, six, walk it down, do, 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 right? So do, do. the same exact pattern. And I'll try to at least maybe have this written out for you guys so you can see. So the trickiest concept about this exercise or this lick is the fingering. But because we use the four finger per fret system with this major scale, each finger actually lies on the fret that it's supposed to be on. So in the beginning of the lick, you have two, one, one, four, two, one, four. Okay, and I'm speaking finger numbers now. Right now we have, when we land there, we have two, three. That's gonna be the most awkward jump. That jump is not necessarily common a lot, but you want to get used to playing that because playing these exercises and the major scale, so that pattern or that shape is very useful because those three notes actually spell out a chord as well. So, four, two, three, walk it down. One, four, two, one. Now that's the next note. So if you see, we started on the first note, then we started on the next note, and then did an arpeggiated movement, walk it down, now we're going to do the same exact thing, one, four, four, but we're doing the same pattern. So you get the idea, right? Then it starts all over when you go to the G flat. Okay. 
So disclaimer, you definitely want to take this slow. I wanted to break this down really for personal reasons. <laughs> that sounds funny. For personal reasons, I just wanted to learn the lick. I just wanted to know what he did. It just caught me off guard so much. I wanted to understand what it was he played. And once I slowed it down and broke it down, it's like, man, that was just, it was such a simple concept, but it's so genius for him to do in that space and to start it where he started it in that measure absolute genius so let's try to go through the entire lick and then play it in context afterwards that last part i'm walking it all the way down the scale and then hitting the G flat afterwards. And then that's when he comes back in with the groove of the song. So in real time, it sounds absolutely ridiculous. It's really, really tough to play at that speed. So you really have to slow it down, take it you know, note by note, use that metronome to your advantage. Start at a low pace, a slow pace, that you can get it out clean, clear and precise and i'll check you guys in the next one peace